Before that, uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about what pure love is. Well, um, basically, pure love would be um, honest conversation or dialogue between child or adolescent youth, however you want to say it, and guardian parent um, about sex, sexuality, just everything it encases, and just how we feel that it's a lifelong um, growth process between the both of you not just you know one and done conversation that it's a it's a constant journey right and it is um as i often say i think it's like like relationship building it like is how we have relationship with one another um i'm her parents and more specifically her mother um although i'm transgender i strongly identify as a mother and this is kind of like our it's been like our model, like things that we talked about when she was growing up. I was sort of the weirdo when I was raising her because we were having a lot of deep conversations and I was sharing a lot of stuff with her. A lot of people did not approve of that. Um, and in hindsight, uh, I think it was the best thing I could have ever done uh, between us. So um, this question, like I said, comes in from Jamie. And Jamie asks, how do you talk about violence when kids are little? Lots of parents whose kids are shielded from violence feel like it's robbing them of their innocence. And parents whose kids are exposed to the violence feel like it's overwhelming them. So I think it's the same question as like, uh, what's the appropriate age? When can someone talk about violence? Like, first I wanna talk about like violence, the, the, the breadth of violence. So violence is, uh, when I'm thinking about violence, I'm thinking about sexual violence, I'm thinking about uh, physical violence. I'm thinking about uh, violence by the police, um, state violence. Um, there's a lot of forms of violence, so I think we need to name those things. And those pieces of violence shift depending on who you are in the world. If you are a person of color, specifically if you're black, if you're trans, um, if you're queer, if you're a woman, if you're poor, if you're a person with a disability. Um, violence kind of um, lives with you in a different way you engage in it in a different way so i think that the i for, for me i think raising you the idea that i could actually shield you from the conversation of violence was actually preposterous to me um yeah because we were poor on welfare i was an independent parent um out as a lesbian at the time um I have a child um, who's a uh, female, dark skin. Um, yeah, <laughs> so there's a lot there, right? There's a lot. And so those conversations for me were vital, uh, were vital for her to know um, how the world is. Now, the ways in which we talk about those things are really important, right? Because we don't want to terrify, <laughs> no. but we do want to give some information. Um, I don't know if you want to say anything about that. Like, do you remember the conversations that I've ha had with you around race and racism and sexism? Because, I mean, I know you kind of, like, broke it down in, like, the basic sense of it. Like, you know how, like, oh, well, sometimes people don't like you because of this reason. And, you know, like, something very basic. But, you know, so I was always aware that there are people who don't agree with the way other people are living or who they are as a person right. and i feel like because of the work that you do and has done that i've always been ex not exposed to violence like oh we live in a crazy neighborhood where the death rate is this but you know mm -hmm. like in a sense that i was always aware that violence was always a part of unfortunately a part of the world and that there's always instances of violence and I mean when you go to school to anything you learn in history class it's all has to do with violence right so it's like 
and it's always against another group of people or a marginalized group of people so it's like mm. you already have that idea in your head like we don't like these people so we're going right. to hurt them um and but that looks a lot different right like it's interesting that you say that like when you go to school and you learn about history like um, that violence is different because it's from the state and government right we're talking about like war and things like that that's not seen as particularly violent it's seen as a necessary, necessary evil yeah. i guess <laughs> Um, so it's not categorized the same way as if something would be categorized in, I don't know, a black neighborhood. What happens in a black neighborhood? What's that thing that people say, like, when white people are together, it's a rally. When people of color are together, it's a, it's riot. a, it's a riot, right? So things are viewed <laughs> very, very differently. Yeah, and also in the context of violence, it's how, um, not even just, like, outwardly, like, you... Sometimes it's not even about, like... How, how am I, I'm trying to word this the right way, like, like when it comes to people of color and what we do or just how we are together or being around each other can be seen as a form of violence to yes. outsiders. Yes. So sometimes us just being black and being loud is scary to them. So they feel mm -hmm. like there's a threat of violence and right. they might retaliate in violence or something. Right. So there's always, there's different forms of it. Even if it's not just like you think about it simply like, oh, I hit someone, that's some type of violence. Or someone got raped, that's violent. But mm -hmm. there's also, I think violence is also verbal as well as an idea can be violent. Mm -hmm. I feel like you not accepting or identifying a person as they want to be identified as a form of violence. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like what you said yeah. too about like, I, I think a lot of when I was younger, um, and I think it still happens today, that when there's a group of people of color walking together, they're considered a gang and a threat, right? It's always scary. Um, you see a group of black kids together or, you know, like it's different when you see different groups of people together. Right. Like now, because, you know, that's the new flavor when you see any type of brown, like Arab, Muslim middle eastern looking person you see them together in traditional clothing and you're like oh my god oh right my god. it's like instant fear and that's a form of violence it's a violence against them yeah uh, you know um because they l are literally just existing just literally walking down the just street existing right um uh and so uh, you know I'm, I'm also thinking about like um the world we live in today in terms of like the access we have online i mean there's so much information. We have so much access to things, right? Uh, I remember when computers first came out. I mean, only, uh, you know, limited households had computers. You had to have money. And if you did, it would be it. like the one, this is the house computer. Right, right. <laughs> like, no now, laptops, no separate things. We all shared this computer together. <laughs> and even though it is still uh, expensive, computers are accessible at libraries. They're accessible... Um, at community schools. centers, at schools, right? Um, so it's a, a little more accessible, and we can actually get on the internet, and you know, if we have Wi-Fi on our phones. Um, so information is out there all the time. We are actually bombarded with violence every single day. Yeah. To add on to that, the two things that they want to shield, well, three things really. I feel like they want to shield us so much from, or that there is so much opinion on, are sex, religion, and violence. And those are the three things that are shoved down our throats every single day, mm. especially in this country. Every movie you see, even if it's an action movie that has nothing to do with anything romantic in any sense, they will find some way to put some scantily clad woman in there just <laughs> to lay on her back and then that's her entire character. Or like just the violence with other countries or showing how things are in other countries to kind of make us look better by comparison or just showing how we're better than other people, but look how violent and uncivilized they are. So I'm like, right. this is, these are images we constantly, constantly see. Oh, look how suppressed mm -hmm. these women are. They're covered from head to toe, but don't show your breasts so they'll think you're easy. Right, so it's right. like... It's like these contradictions. Everything. They're saying, don't and, be violent, it's wrong, but then right. we... The most views on YouTube are videos of fights. <laughs> right, right. So then... I go going back to the question, like how do we talk to our young people about violence? And the the messed up thing about it is that it's already there. Unfortunately, it is already there. The existence of violence is there. And again, depending on who you are in the world, it's you'll it's, be more exposed. It's very apparent, right? So, I think for me, um, as a, you know, a, a poor independent parent, a woman at the time, queer, lesbian, identified at the time. Um, being at the margins, um, fearing that my daughter could be taken away from me because actually the violence that I was experiencing with um, 
her biological father, right? The physical violence on that. So the, uh, there, that conversation needed to happen, right? And it wasn't um, like, uh, be afraid of everything. Everything is scary in the world, right? It was more so a conversation in the sense of, you know, I, I feel like I keep on saying the same things. It's like giving you these bits of information, but actually having you be able to form your own opinion and idea about these things and then having a conversation about them. Um, rather than painting a picture of my experience, I can I can give a little bit of that, but I could also give, I, I kind of gave like, these are what some people think. This is what I think. This is what's, you know, these are other opinions. This is what's happening. What do you think about that? Why do you think that's happening? Um, how do you think it can change, right? So it was, it was not a sense of hopelessness of, these are all the horrible things and that's just the way yeah, life is. Fear wasn't involved. Mm -hmm. Not I mean, not necessarily fear, but more safety mm -hmm. and information more than making me afraid so I wouldn't leave the house. But just like, you know, leave the house. But just so you know, these are things to be aware of because mm -hmm. these are things that happen in our world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's interesting because growing up, right, um, my parents did not know about the sexual abuse that was happening with me growing up. And my mom and my dad, especially my mom, she was very clear about, you know, protecting us. Uh, my mom always told us about strangers, always told us about, you know, how to handle certain situations. Um, and then maybe in her generation, it was more of a telling than a conversation. Uh, but I did get something out of that. Uh, and, and then, um, you know, having that... Uh, and it was it was mostly about like being a girl, like being a girl in this world and what happens. Um, and that was my reality, like every single day growing up, the sexual violence. And now as an adult, I can look back and name it violence, right? I think the sad thing is when we don't identify it as violence and we think it's a part of our everyday life. And that's what I thought. Um, I thought that men touching me, um, calling out to Harassment. me. Harassment. You know, uh, what they call cat calling, all these things. You think it's regular? Totally normal. And I needed to learn how to navigate that normalcy, um, either by engaging with them or hiding from them and then being called a bitch, right? That's always the thing, though. We always teach women or females how to prevent and avoid, but we don't teach the offenders how to not offend and how to not be violent and how to not be you know, how to not force yourself on someone else, how to be respectful, how to have boundaries. We never teach, um, you know, because not saying that women don't rape, but majority of offenders are male. And I can guarantee you majority of these males are not being taught as men that no means no, respect people's bodies, you know, ask. And, you know, if you get turned down, then you just got to keep it pushing. You know, like they always teach us, if this happens, you know, cross the street. Tell somebody, make sure, like, yell fire, or if you see a cop, well, you know, like, there's all these different methods, but I'm like, it's unfortunate that we have to teach our daughters to do that when it should be teaching people to just let people live. And I often say that, too. I think that it's a, like a multi-prong approach, right? It's, it's yes, talking to those pushed to the margins about how to... Uh, protect themselves possibly right what are the things that you can do getting other community members or people on the street involved to help and things but at the same time just like you said we have to be having the conversations of how not to raise violent people right how not to raise a violent man um, because again that word violence violent things happen every single day every second of the day um, but most times we're not identifying those things as violent so to me the idea that we wouldn't have conversations about violence with our children is it just doesn't make sense to me uh, it, it, it's it's a conversation that is has always happened um, and um, these it's about I mean it's it's from from when you were little up until you were older like how you traveled on the train how about be aware you know, of my surroundings exactly not having not having headphones in your ears or not having the sound of being a well-lit um, street right act like i'm making a fake phone call if i feel uncomfortable you know all, all the different methods on how mm -hmm. to be safe put my keys in between my knuckles right things like that you know right and it's like i think it is a scary thing actually i mean it is it is uh but i think we almost level it out when we are feeling that that conversation is not 
topped off with helplessness rather there's something that's giving us um, some power to do something right so I think with you um, you grew up in activist circles so it's like we were always talking about you know fighting for rights and doing this stuff so there was always some power I remember um, there's a story of one time we were on the bus together in mm -hmm. Brooklyn and and this was a, a scene that I put in one of my shows violence in motion uh, and we were on the I think you were probably I don't know eight nine even uh, a drunk very 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 drunk man um, got on the bus um, and sat next to a woman it was a very drunk Latino man um, but I sat next to this uh, woman who was uh, black and literally was sexually harassing her like just like very openly you know getting close to her almost touching her she the woman was obviously very uncomfortable kind of trying to hold you know and no one no one on the bus did anything like people were just like you know that's not my business not my business right and um i spoke up i yelled i spoke up i went to the bus driver i demanded that the bus driver stop and remove this man from the bus because he was sexually harassing the woman you know like all these things and when we got off the bus i remember you looked at me and you said i'm proud of you mommy and and she was like, um, I'm glad that you made that man get off the bus, right? So not, not only am I teaching her about the violence that happens, and she's witnessing it every single day, um, I showed her that I could do something about it. And on the heels of that, I had a conversation about sometimes we can't always do that, right? Because it's about safety, right? So there's multiple, I think there's multiple conversations Definitely. that happen around uh, violence and how we navigate those, you know? Um, yeah, sometimes we have agency to speak up, and sometimes we absolutely do not, and that's that's what happens sometimes right um but this idea of like that the conversation about violence isn't just a thing about parent and child but it's like a community-wide conversation and not just what's happening in our own communities right um so like the violence talking about what violence looks like um in other places right where we are getting fed a lot of bullshit through you know mainstream media about other um countries right having conversations about that, making um, some different kinds of assessments and maybe thinking about other media outlets that are more grassroots and, you know, doing comparison, right? I wanted you to have the ability to come up with your own assessment about things. I could tell you what I think. I could tell you what that person thinks. I could tell you what the news said. And then I'm going to ask you, what do you think, right? And I think that's that's a, a big piece of it. Um, and... And at the same time, there's a lot of, lot of, lot of scary shit. Um, what does this conversation look like when a parent um, is raising a, a trans child, right? Um, maybe a, a trans black daughter, right? Where we know that in... There's layers to the stuff that that child is going to have to deal with that another child would never even think about. Right. And how year after year after year... The numbers of trans women of color, specifically black women who have been murdered, continues to rise, right? So if you're raising a trans daughter, how then do you have these conversations, right? That's a fucking horribly scary thing, right? And and what are the what are the uh, actions that we take as parents um, to protect our children? Um, and to bring awareness to all these things. So I think it's very multi-layered. It's not just a conversation that doesn't end there. And, and it's not just one conversation. Yeah, and it's like, you don't wanna, it's not like you have to bombard them with like graphic images and videos and make them yeah. afraid. It's, and the whole thing is not to create fear, but just information on how to maneuver around the, you know, in this world, in this neighborhood, in this community, in your home, and just making sure that you're as safe as possible because anything can happen. But not don't live your life in fear. Also, you should always like throughout their lives let them know because they're either gonna witness it or see it in a movie or something and just right. know that these things happen. But you should still inform them that it's not the only thing that happens and it's not always scary and it's not always you don't always have to be in your guard. Like because I know at one point because you know like the being a female and especially like going off to college and stuff i know that like date rape is a thing that happens there or just 
you know, rape in general, you're at a party, you're drinking. So I know for me, a lot of, a good chunk of my like teen years, early 20s, and because I know so many people who are survivors, like it's ridiculous throughout my life how many people that I've met that are survivors and it breaks my heart that I'm, it got to the point where I was like, when is it going to be my turn? Mm. Like, and how, you know, like how would I navigate that? Because I'm like, I can't even, I, seriously, like I have so many friends that, I would you would never even know that they've survived and I'm like and I'm like if it happens all the time to all these people and all these situations you're always just like when is it going to happen to me how am I going to prepare for that what am I going to do so that gives you that anxiety but you don't want to live your life in fear because mm -hmm. I mean yeah I could walk outside and a a plane part could fall and hit me but that doesn't mean I'm not going to go outside all right right yeah, it's a it's a balance, right? And sometimes we can be strong to do that, and sometimes we can't, and that's a reality. We're humans, and um, but I think it's a constant conversation. And I'm reminded of a video that I saw on Facebook about, um, you know, um, a black father talking to his I think she was like seven year old daughter, maybe younger, about police violence, and actually teaching her techniques on how to. Uh, not get shot by the fucking cops and that's so sad that we have to have those conversations but it's a reality that is, you know as black people it's like it's a reality and then the darker your skin the worse it is yeah. right so it is a reality that violence has been a part of our history it's in our DNA unfortunately and right? it's better to have that conversation young because I know I've spoken to some adults like it's becoming a part of my vocabulary now that whenever I part ways with someone, especially a person of color, I'm always like, be safe, make sure you get home okay, like, you know, be careful. Be... You shouldn't wait until violence happens to have the conversation. Right, right. I think that's that's a good point. We shouldn't have to wait to that because it is a reality, an, an unfortunate reality, but that conversation could be really good and, and also even help with processing when violence happens. Um, Yes, and then and then degrees of violence, right? Like we spoke of before, there are degrees of this, but violence is violence is violence. And so these conversations most definitely have to happen. And I think that um, those conversations can happen very creatively, creatively with young people. Um, and that could happen like, you know, in terms of how, you know, hitting one another, not hitting one another, right? Uh, making comparisons and stuff when you watch movies about um, of violence, and dissecting that and, and really talking through it. I think it has to be a part of the fabric, right? Uh, because it's there. It exists. So I, I think we answered in the way like the conversation must exist uh, and there is no cookie cutter model in which to do it. Um, I think for some groups of people, the conversation is more immediate than others, um, but it's necessary. Um, and and not the not just the fear and hopelessness, but hope and safety plan and and the idea of safer because nothing is absolutely safe. Um, and this is the world that we're in, uh, bombarded by violence every day, bombarded by it. So I'd say talk about it, talk about it as much as you can. Um, in different ways that you can and not just one time just like the sex conversation uh, we need to be talking about it uh, multiple in multiple times, ways yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes i hope that we answered your question thank uh, you for your question by yes. the way and we continue to ask you to send in questions so that we can answer them uh, and we're going to have some great shows coming up so please keep on supporting us we love you thank you um, thank you so much bye bye see you next time next time